You know, as time has got on and when Overdue Doctor Who Review became Take Two and from then to now, the views on these videos have been steadily going down. But I'm still going to see it through because this is who I am. This is where I stand. Where I stand is where I fall. How's that for a, not really a joke, (laughs) opening? The Doctor Falls, the end of Series 10. And you know how last time I said that, going back to the world enough in time, that I found more problems with it and it kind of lost some ground in my estimation. I just found more to love in The Doctor Falls. I think in the past, historically, I have placed uh, World Enough and Time above Doctor Falls if I was looking at them as individual things. But so help me. This thing is wonderful. Top to bottom, Missy and the Master, Bill and what happened to her and her conversion, Nardole, the Doctor, all of it. It is phenomenal. I kind of wish it was the actual end of his run instead of Twice Upon a Time, even though I don't think Twice Upon a Time is bad. It just feels weird that this is building up to him being done, and yet he's not done, but that's more of an issue for next time. So, where do we start? Well, for starters, it's a much better cold open, even though it does have a slight jump forward in time from where things actually pick up. Because we have to pick up in the city with the Master and Missy being in absolute control of everything. Or at least, uh, thinking that they are. Now, we do actually get kind of an explanation for what the master was doing and why he was here now it's debatable whether or not it's canon because what we get is we get the doctor basically cold reading him saying let me guess what happened and assuming that the doctor's read is accurate which might as well then what that means is the master showed up here maybe on purpose maybe by accident but he got stuck his his tardis busted and he's stuck here And he actually probably took over for a while. But then, given that he's lacking his usual resources, he's lacking his TARDIS, he doesn't have the Toclophane to back him up, the people eventually rebelled against him. And that was why he had to hide his face. So, it comes an episode later, but we have an explanation for why he was dressed as Mr. Razor around anyone who wasn't Bill. And why he would have had an existing alternate identity established so we get an explanation on that it's still a pure roaring coincidence that the master happened to be stranded on a ship that the doctor ended up on but out of the things that i had questions about from the previous episode i'm prepared to accept that one coincidence so because like the worst thing would have been if if it was some kind of weird bizarre convoluted plan it's not Like, which is the best thing for me, because I couldn't remember if we got an explanation. And I was dreading this convoluted, I've been waiting for you plan explanation. And it's just not there. The implication is that the Master's just been cooling his heels around here, and the Doctor just showed up. Yeah, I can work with that. I like that the Doctor lays out the idea of all the various Cybermen that we've seen and get referenced as what he calls parallel evolution, which is that... Basically, under the right circumstances, with the right amount of desperation, some version of the Cybermen is just what happens to the human race when they're desperate enough. Which, honestly, by that logic, makes me wonder, would we count the Toclophane as a kind of Cybermen? Just like, thematically, if we're laying out that idea. Something to think about. So the Doctor turns the table on the Master and Missy. They have to abandon and go up to the upper levels with Bill in tow. And the Doctor saying to her, I will fix this. 
and they get up to where we opened with Bill carrying him out. And then later we have Bill just waking up. And I like that the show doesn't um, extend this for too long. But initially, I, I remember first time watching this thingy, oh, I guess he just fixed her. That seemed a little bit easy because she wakes up and it's just Bill. But then we start to see the way people behave around her. And then before very long, we get the reveal. No, she's still a Cyberman. And we and we get, I don't, like, there's so many little touches here that are the kinds of things I got used to the show just not bothering to do. We get an explanation for why Bill is being so good and, and stubborn about fighting the programming that's in her head. Because the doctor references how long and how fiercely she fought the monks. She basically had, however long the monks had taken over Earth, that much time of continual mental training to resist this kind of stuff. So, rather than going the Clara route, she's just magical and amazing and the best and special because... We have an actual explanation as to why she is able to resist this. And even that, you can tell and it gets brought up. This is hard for her and she is going to eventually lose this fight. And she actually has a line that I had completely forgotten. That is almost kind of my key into a whole new understanding of this episode. She says to the doctor, I don't want to live if I can't be me anymore. Do you understand? Yeah. Just the way that interaction goes, just the thing that she said and the way he answers makes it so clear that he does understand. And it is this clinging to everything that she is, which is what he's doing, which actually validates him fighting the regeneration the way he does actually from about the midpoint on because we get hinted at that it's starting to happen well before we get to the climax of the film and him taking on board and fully and understanding and embodying this idea of i don't want to stop being who i am and i think that's actually really core to this doctor and a big part of my love for this doctor i'm i'm planning to do a deep dive on this once i wrap up uh, capaldi's tenure but his arc as a character the journey that he goes on during his time is so impactful and meaningful to me and this clinging to and this understanding and him reaffirming the idea of yeah I don't want to, I'm not sure I want to keep going if I can't be me. He's fought to be who he is right now. And he doesn't know who he'll be if he regenerates. And he doesn't want to lose what he's fought to become. I love all of that. And I, I, it breaks my heart and it is so beautifully written that Bill says to him, you told me you could fix me. I did say that, yes. Were you lying? No. Were you right? No. That is proper tragedy. He really thought that he could fix this. But he can't. And he has to be honest and admit that to her. That's crushing. And beautifully painful. The doctor's entire confrontation with Missy and the master. Oh, that whole scene, like every second of it is gold. And again, an affirmation of who the doctor is as a whole, but who this doctor is in specific, who he is, what he stands for, what he's here to do. And as much as I have gone on in the past about his whole thing where he goes, I do what I do because it's right, because it's decent, and above all, it's kind. As much as I love that, there's actually a much more succinct, perfect summation of who the Doctor is, and it's this. You can't win. I know, and? In that moment, in that interaction, 
just making it plain. I don't care if I win. I will give a few people a fighting chance for a little longer, and it's the right thing to do, so I'm going to do it. I love all of this so much, and Capaldi puts his all into that performance and that scene especially, but the whole thing. He does phenomenal work in this. And Missy and the Master, that's their last scene with him. They go off and their scenes after that are only with each other and they're still great. And that is done really well too. And there's something perfectly suited to the idea that A, Missy stabs him in the back. (laughs) Of course she does. And he hits her with the laser screwdriver, says she won't be able to regenerate after this, which... Presumably she does, but they actually don't lock that down. The implication here is that she follows on immediately from John Sim. We actually don't know that because she flat out admits herself. I'm not sure I think so. Because their being in the same place at the same time has muddled up time enough that things weren't registering right in terms of locking it away in her memory. But after he does that to her and she's dying... And he's dying that they just laugh about it. The master kills himself and laughs about it in both incarnations. Yeah. Yeah. That is awesome for this modern era version of the master it wouldn't have worked with earlier versions of the master because honestly the defining element of the master was really kind of the lengths he was prepared to go to to avoid death that was a big part of what drove him i mean that and the desire for power and control but a lot of his actions were driven by a absolute terrified fear of dying and so it you you really could only do this with more recent incarnations of the master like John Sim, like Michelle Gomez. With these versions of the master, yeah, I buy it. I buy it completely. Because he is so spiteful and she has just let go of so much hatred. They're just going to laugh. Nardole's exit is great. The argument that the doctor has with him to basically convince him that he's the one who needs to go with the children and the doctor has to be the one to stay behind, that is a brilliantly played scene. Matt Lucas really wonderfully underplays most of that. He like he got terrifically subtle with Nardole as time went on, especially in this episode. That's all great. There's this awesome little moment where the master is applying eyeliner. There's no real context for that moment. It just happens. So I suppose you could read it as he's learning how to put on makeup because he knows he's going to be messy later. I personally choose to read it as, no, he just does that. We've just, and he's always done that. We've just never watched him do it before. Ah, I love that. The melancholy in the doctor's voice when he's looking up dying. No stars. I hope there be stars. That hurts wonderfully as well. And you know what? I'm going to pick out a line that a lot of people got very uppity about when this thing aired. And it's this line from Bill. I'm I'm usually all about women and then kind of people my own age. Yeah. Glad you knew that. I remember so many people, and maybe some of them still do. I think I've just scared off most of these kind of people from my channel. (laughs) Haha, <laughs> don't miss you. Uh, but I remember so many people being like, oh my God, they had to be like, hey, did you know I'm a lesbian one more time? A uh, woke agenda, cramming it down our throats. No, you morons. She's reaffirming her identity. Her struggle this entire episode has been holding on to who she is slowly losing that and saying she would rather be dead than lose that and in this moment with the doctor reminding him of the first two things he would have been aware of about her 
from their conversations together. She is reaffirming the base of their interactions, the base of his understanding of her identity. She is reaffirming who she is because that's what she's been trying to do the whole episode. It's not going, oh, we got to be sure she says she's a lesbian one more time, which gets reaffirmed later anyway with Heather. I, I, I said morons. Maybe that was a little harsh. To be fair, I didn't quite appreciate what that line was doing. But I always figured, like, even at the time, I'm like, it's not doing what you say it's doing. Now I feel like I get what it's doing. So feel okay about that, too. I mentioned Heather... Uh, so before I get to that, maybe I'll, I'll like I'll do my one kind of nitpick and then my overall criticism of the structure of these two parts because like it it's not perfect for as much as I've been gushing because there's the upgrade of the Cybermen which like makes total sense and it fits the fact that time is moving faster down below they have time to upgrade and that we get the more recent versions of the Cybermen that we've seen before. It still just makes the Cybermen kind of lose that creepy factor that World Enough in Time gave them again. We have a little bit at the front end with, like, the Scarecrows thing. But, like, when they just show up later and they're just getting blown up left and right, it's just the metal armor again. It, it's a little bit of a letdown. It's a little bit of a disappointment. I, I get why it's there and it makes sense. But it somehow still feels a little deflating all the same. But... Part of that has to do with the fact that I I floated this idea last time. I don't know how well I explained it. I'm going to try. I'm going to take another crack at it. I think that the two episodes, World Enough in Time and The Doctor Falls, should truly have been three episodes. The story that is told over these two episodes should have been told over three. What should have happened was... The majority of the first episode should have been dedicated to Missy trying to be the doctor and the doctor monitoring them. It should have, they should have extended that out to be the majority of the episode and have that end with Bill getting killed and getting taken down to the lower floors. And then second episode should have been basically what World Enough in Time was. Up to the reveal of Mr. Razor as the master. And then, honestly, the Doctor Falls could basically just be put up straight as it is. But um, mostly World Enough in Time should have been split into two episodes so that those two components could have a little bit more room to breathe from each other. And then this whole arc of Missy coming to terms with her identity, Bill losing her identity, and then both of those characters, as well as the Doctor himself, all reaffirming who they are. And it still lands, but it could have landed better if the story that's crammed into two episodes could have had a little bit of breathing room and stretched out over three. I certainly would have taken this over the Monk three-parter. As much as I love extremists, this is where you should have dedicated three episodes. So, there's that. Now, Heather. And the return of Heather and the uh, the whole idea of bringing back the pilot. This was better than I remember, but I still have some, some niggles and or some uncertainties about it. It's better in that my memory of it was that there was a lot more emphasis on the idea that their love brought her back to save Bill or something to that. Like, love saves or love conquers all or whatever. Uh, which, this isn't. And I, I actually don't necessarily have a problem with that as a premise. I like, I'm skeptical of it. I won't lie. But the the reason that idea bothered me was because they barely knew each other. So the idea of their love was so strong that now they must live together. I'm like, what? No, but it it isn't really leaning on that idea very hard at all. So um, my memory kind of distorted how much emphasis that had. So that that was good. I do think that there should have been somewhere along the line uh, a reminder of of Heather. Not necessarily that she was still out there because then we risk turning Heather into another mystery box where like she's in the background of 
things or like we see shots from her perspective and like or whatever. I I don't mean that. I mean like I I feel like there should have been more pining of Bill over the course of the series as a whole about what might have been or feeling guilty about what happened to Heather because at this point we we do have 10 episodes in between when she's introduced and when she comes back and only two episodes that she appears in. So it is still a little bit flimsy, but the idea of her saving Bill by making her like herself actually went down for me much better this time. Now there's a moment that happens that I am kind of of two minds on because I've seen other critics, including ones that I respect, really hammer on this moment as kind of wrecking things a bit, but I'm not sure it does. And that is the moment where Heather says that she could turn Bill human again. I can make you human again. It's all just atoms. You can rearrange them any way you like. I can put you back home. I can make chips. I've seen this criticized in a way because it removes the tragedy of Bill's death because she could choose to become human again. Uh, And that it kind of takes the wind out of things that like it could all be made perfect and makes the death feel less substantive. I don't think it does. And I don't think that's the reason that that line is there. I think the reason that line is there is because Bill needs to choose to go with Heather. And if the choice is travel with me, or you just die, that's not really a choice. But if she has the option to become human again, that means that her choice to not do that has value and is legitimate and isn't coerced or forced. I will still grant it makes Heather as an entity very overpowered in terms of what she's capable of doing which was kind of an issue when that went in that first episode anyway. Like, what this fueled thing was even capable of is, it's really OP. Like, that's still an issue. But I think the reason that the whole idea that she offers this to Bill is to let us know that Bill choosing to travel with her is a choice freely made. Not because, well, it's either that or death, which is what it might have come across otherwise. And the fact that it is immediately followed up with basically Bill accepting, I didn't want to change, and I kind of have now, but I'm still fundamentally me. Like, my body's dead. I'm now a weird, drippy, fuel thing. But I'm still fundamentally me. And accepting that change... And then following that up immediately with the doctor saying, I don't want to change again. Never again. Fighting his regeneration. That feels really fitting. I still think he should have actually regenerated at this point. Keep the speech from the next one. Have him do that. But I think that should land here. Uh, Instead, we get the teaser of him running into the first doctor, played by David Bradley. Which admittedly is a decent hook <laughs> into the into the Christmas special. And I'll get to that next week. But aside from a few small points, this is phenomenal. And I think I think easily my favorite finale of Modern Era Doctor Who. I think the only one that even comes close might be Journey's End. But they don't get this good. This is so satisfying and fulfilling and complete and reaffirms everything I love about this show, about these characters, about this incarnation of the Doctor in specific. It's all reaffirmed and it's amazing. The Doctor Falls. Have you rewatched it lately? What did you think about it? Whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments and let's talk about it. 
I have a Patreon link in the description. I'll uh, maybe someday I'll get to put it up there again. I'm kind of giving up because YouTube is busted and won't tell me why that won't work anymore. But if you are able to help me out on the Patreon, there is uh, rewards at every tier. Things like names in the credits, access to my Discord, uh, getting to vote in polls on future topics, seeing my docket for the upcoming months, and more. There's also YouTube memberships, which get you cool emojis and stickers to get to use in the comments and in live chats, as well as a few other perks. Take a look at the options. This is my living, and support through things like the YouTube memberships and the Patreon are what enable me to do this as my living. So even if you're not able to do that, the likes, the shares, subscribes, they help me out. But no pressure. At the end of the day, you're the council. I'm only running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned.